we all know the elections coming up here pretty rapidly it's coming in November everybody's pretty sure Donald Trump's gonna win we got polls showing that Kamala Harris is leading in a lot of polls and people think Trump's just gonna take the vote right that he's gonna win probably 98 percent of the vote you gotta stop and remember we all thought that last time too something could happen again right we could go to bed and Trump has 35 states leading right we wake up the next morning we all know something could happen because it happened last time right we all go to bed and wake up and the, 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 everything's different I still believe that we are not going to know who wins the presidency possibly for a week or all the way up to the inauguration right because either side no matter who wins is going to you know sue the other side or try to get the votes recounted and everything else it's going to be a total calamity here i remember when i was a kid you'd go to bed during the election and usually that night or the next morning you knew who the president was and it hasn't been like that in the last couple elections right now people think automatically trump's going to win but you also got people thinking kamala's going to win right guys I don't know if it's an election or a selection. I've said that I think maybe what they're doing with the economy is they're propping it up, right? They're propping it up because it's teetering. It's about to collapse. It's about to go this way, that way, right? And I think they're propping it up so if Trump wins, it can all fall apart, right? And that way they can blame Trump for it. I know some people are like, that makes no sense. Why would they do that, right? Why would they just prop the economy up just long enough to get Trump in there? Well, then they can blame Trump, right? What's what's going to happen if Trump wins? He he outright wins. You know, there's no big deals going on. He out he outright wins. He's elected the president. He gets sworn in. What's going to happen? Well, number one, I'm going to tell you right now, and this is going to upset some of you. Things aren't going to change overnight. They're not. You're not going to have more money in your pocket overnight. You know, you also got to stop and think you're only going to get four years of Trump, right? You're only going to have four more years. You're going to get a little bit of a break from what's been going on. That's it, right? If he's elected, I believe that he'll open back up the drilling, right? We'll start drilling in our country. I'm not sure how he's going to handle all this stuff overseas with wars and all that. You know, I wish personally he would just cut the funding to him, right? Like, we're not sending you nothing else. This is your problem. You deal with it. I told you before, we need to stop being the world's police force and focus on what's going on here in America. We can send billions to other countries to help them, you know, pay. They're at war, but yet they need money to pay their retirement funds and stuff like that. So we're paying it. Meanwhile, Americans are sitting here doing without. Everything costs so much now that you're not doing without because, you know, you're wanting to. You're doing without because you're having to pick and choose what you're buying now, right? It, money is the root of all evil we all know that right but unfortunately money is what makes the world go around plain and simple you ain't got no money the world you know you, you're not gonna have very much right if trump gets in there maybe he'll he'll stop that but you got to understand you're not going to just wake up and overnight you're going to have more money in your pocket it's not going to be that way i mean four more years of him that's all we're going to get you know now, if Kamala wins, it's just going to keep going down and down, right? I, I'm not talking about the economy as far as crashing. I think they're going to keep it propped up for her. But what I'm talking about is all this inflation is going to keep going up. It's going to be harder and harder for us, you know, to get by. A lot of people are saying, well, why wasn't Kamala fixing all these problems when she was in office? Because now we all remember they were telling us the economy's fine. Inflation's under control. Everything's back to normal. But now her ticket is running that she's going to stop this inflation and get prices back down, right? And you hear people say, well, why didn't she do this when she was in office? She was vice president, right? I mean, kind of like a figurehead. You know, they do a little bit, but they don't They do not do a lot. You know, they're not in control of everything. Now, if Trump comes in there, one thing I would like to see if Trump wins is to get this housing prices back down, right? I think the reason the housing market is so high is during the pandemic, you still had people building houses. Yeah, building houses at $10 two before studs, right? 
So the bank, they loaned this money on it to build this house. Got to keep the economy going, right? Well, when they started, the, the lumber prices went up. Everybody else's houses started inching up, right? Well, what happens when, you, when your property value or your home value goes up? You're paying more taxes on it, more money into the economy, right? They're trying to get it. They've got it to a point now where it is, I don't know if this is a word, but unattainable for an average person to be able to buy a home and some land. Used to, my grandpa told me, you know, I've told you he grew up in the Depression, fought World War II, all that. He told me used to you could buy 10 acres. Now, this is in the 50s and 60s here in Alabama. You could buy 10 acres of land, build your house, sell the timber off of five acres of it and it would pay you back for building your house and buying your land now you can't do that around here property values are anywhere from ten thousand up an acre right it means if it don't have nothing on it like utilities it's around ten thousand dollars an acre well now people in my area is not paying that right they're, they're saying we're not going to pay these prices and i told you yesterday a lot of the houses that they bought, I mean, you can go on like, uh, say Zillow, and you can see what the previous purchase price was. And a lot of them around here around 2017 to 2019, they were bought. Let's say they were around $100,000 is what they paid for it. Well, now they're asking two fifty, three hundred thousand, dollars 300000 right? But nobody's buying right now. I think a lot of people are sitting back waiting to see what happens if Trump comes in office. I don't know how he could get the housing prices down. Or the property values, however you want to call it. I don't see how he could do it, but I wish there was a way he could. Because anyone who doesn't own land right now and own a home, it's going to be dang near impossible for anybody to do that. I mean, it really is. It's too expensive. It's too expensive to own it. And, and number one, I think the other day I seen something where it used to, if you owned a house, or if you were buying a house, a family, a husband, wife, they would need to make around $65,000 a year roughly to be able to afford a house, right? Well, now that's almost one hundred and fifty to 200000 is what you've got to make to be able to afford a house and live comfortably, you know, pay your bills and everything else. The the more money that, that we hear it all the time, well, we had to raise our prices because we had to pay our employees more, right? That is not what's happening. I want you to understand that's not what's happening. A company has a profit margin. Let's just say it's a million dollars. That's what they make year over year, right? Well, we got to pay our employees more. That's going to cut into our profits. Well, no, no, it's not. Let's raise our product price so we still get our profit margin. But now their profit margin has went from one and they, they've doubled it, right? They're two million because they've raised their prices so much. We were all told that uh, inflation and all this was transitory. It would come down, but the food prices are still still high, right? They haven't come back down. It's like with gas. They'll raise gas prices up so high, people will start complaining, right? But they know that people will still buy it, and then they'll hit a level where people kind of back off buying it, and they'll drop the prices a little bit, and then people will still complain, but they'll buy it. It's the same thing with groceries. They can get it up high here, right? And then they'll be like, well, let's let's take a couple cents off, you know, and bring it back down. We're, really, we should be back dang near the pre-pandemic prices, right? You got to think, we went for years and years and years here in America where the prices at the grocery store never really changed that much, right? They never really changed. You know, maybe five cents max that something was changed. Except for meat, it kind of, you know, went up and down a lot. But I'm talking your normal goods. Price was kind of flat, right, for years pandemic come along that allowed all these companies and manufacturers and all that to start raising the prices and shrinking what you're getting in your stuff right we all know about shrinkflation but how is trump going to fix all that i don't know because you're only going to get four years right and people are like well then the next president will come in it, it, it we're at a point now where this is unfixable it's unfixable all we're going to do is get a break from it right just a little break for four years and everybody thinks they're going to have all this extra money in their pocket. And I'm going to tell you you're not. I'm going to be the one to tell you you're not. You know, if you're saving a couple dollars at the gas pump, let's say gas goes back down to $1.50 a gallon. It's not going to help you that much because guess what? Food prices are still high, right? But some people say, well, every little bit helps. 
And yes, it does, but it comes to a point where you're over here robbing Peter to pay Paul just to get by for the month, right? You're having to choose, am I going to get my medicine? Am I going to buy groceries? Am I going to pay the water bill? Am I going to pay the phone bill? You know, you're having to choose, pick and pay. Or you're at the point where you can pay your bills, but yet you have nothing left over at the end of the month, right? And I mean nothing. You have no savings. So if something happens like you get sick or your car tears up or... or something breaks at your hat you don't have the money to fix it no more because all your money is going towards these bills right and food food is absolutely ridiculous we all see it you know I, I go to the grocery store just like everybody else we prep but we still go to the grocery store right you'll come out of there with a bag of groceries that's running you anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars, and it's just one bag right it, that's to the point of ridiculousness hamburger meat during the depression, heck, when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, hamburger meat was cheap. That was your cheap meal. You could always have hamburger meat, right? Now that hamburger meat around here is almost $5 a pound, right? And that's becoming unaffordable for people. If Kamala wins and she comes in office, what's going to happen? It's just going to keep getting the way it is. It's, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And if Trump wins, you'll get a little bit of glimmer of hope, right? But at the end of the day... You're still in the same boat. The only way to fix this is they've got to crash all this and start it back over. That's the only way. I mean, Trump, if he comes in and does a price freeze, you can't raise your prices no more, right? they got to stay right here. You're going to have people say, well, that's un-American. He can't do it. But if Kamala did it, everybody would be like, oh, yeah, 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 that's, that's what we need to do, you know, price freezes. We've got to get inflation down, right? And they're telling you it's down. But, I mean, we got to get the grocery store prices down. we got to get the cost of home ownership down we got to get the cost of vehicles down we got to get the cost of medicine down we got to get the cost of everything down i told you the blood sugar medicines the genuvia 100 milligrams in my area without insurance is over 620 dollars for 30 pills ridiculous right but we got to get the price of all this down and there's no way to get it down eventually all this the the bubble the balloon is getting bigger and bigger and bigger eventually it's going to pop right and a lot of people think, well, when the world goes to crap, I'll kick back and won't have no bills. No, you're still going to have to pay taxes on your property if you're lucky enough to own property. The person you're renting your home from, they're still going to want their rent, right? Go back, read your history. I'm big on reading your history. During the Depression, people still had to pay their property tax, their rent, all this and that. But during the Depression, you had more people that lived out in the country, and they didn't really notice the Depression, right? You got more people now that live in the city, suburbs and things like that. They don't grow their own food. They, they don't have farms and stuff. It's going to be a lot worse than it was back then. I firmly believe we're right there at the Depression right now, possibly even in it, but they're just keeping us floated just enough to keep us out of it. But, guys, it is your duty as a citizen to go out and vote. It really is. Now, does it make a difference? I can't sit here and say yes or no. My personal opinion for myself, at the end of the day, whoever gets in there is who they want in there. Whoever they can control the best. That's who gets in there. You know, drain the swamp, drain the swamp. The swamp didn't get drained. Right? So let's see what happens. Keep prepping. I know money's tight, but you got to do the best you can do right now. You know, like I've said before, if, you know, if you're one of these people that drink a $5 coffee every day, cut back don't you know go buy you a couple bags of beans or something let me know your thoughts on this video keep your head on the swivel be aware of your surroundings at all times protect yourself and your family at all times at that moment your only person can do it stay safe keep prepping microphones still haven't got here but maybe monday or tuesday they'll get here i haven't received an email i'm still using the earbud we'll see how this one sounds guys stay safe and keep prepping